Welcome to the Summer of Woo, you radiant brightlings. This season, the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry is casting a light on all things mystical. By tapping into the magic in and all around us, we'll better connect to our individual and collective sacredness so we can all shine our brightest. Join us in this six-episode mini-season as we open ourselves up to mystery and woo. Amy! <laughs> I have a confession. I have to what? add something. <laughs> I am a woo girl. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you, are you familiar with a woo girl? Because I'm not quite no. the standard stereotypical woo! When out partying, girl. <laughs> I'm the type of woo girl that you just described around magical, mystical, mysterious woo. And I gotta, I gotta ask. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Are you a woo girl? I've been a woo girl for a very long time. <laughs> I've been. I mean, you know, it goes back to when um, my mom and I moved to Harmony Hills Study Center back in. 1969 I was 11 years old and you know every day was mystical and paranormal and magical and uh, like all kinds of things and then of course like move past that got to put got to shove that down a little bit but it kept popping up and I feel like now I've been a woo girl for a very long time again when but, did you know that being a woo girl was the life for you? That the woo wasn't leaving, the woo, the woo wasn't temporary. When it felt better to be in the woo than not in the woo. Ooh. Yeah. I will say though that I've had I've been um sort of missing it a little bit. It's like I haven't been paying attention to it. And today I said, oh, you, you need to start wooing your woo. <laughs> <laughs> like romanticizing our lives. <laughs> I need to woo my woo. <laughs> and bring it Where back. Where art thou, my woo? <laughs> yeah, bring it back. Bring it back to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so... I've recently shared with you, I too have felt disconnected from the woo. Um, and that's actually kind of normal for me post the winter solstice, right? As the sun starts coming in, usually around February, March, I feel a little disconnected from the woo, but okay with it. And someone once told me that's because you're a witch, <laughs> right? We <laughs> like the dark. Um, but it's really been bothering me. Like you said, I loved how you phrased it earlier. Like it felt worse to be, or it felt better to be in the woo than, than out of the woo. And mm -hmm. so I too have been like, oh, I need my woo. <laughs> I'm a woo girl with no woo woo. <laughs> well, and I want to just give you credit where credit is due that you and I were meeting. We were having a little you know, Brightly podcast and friend meeting. We met for a fun breakfast and then we walked around Bede Marcaska. And I feel like I was doing a little bit of whining, but um, I think it was more like, what are we going to do? I, I'm not feeling it. Not that I wasn't feeling it with the podcast. I just couldn't like get figured on what the next grouping of shows would be. And you and I were going back and forth, like, do we take the entire summer off? Do we do this? Do we do that? And I said, I kind of missed, like, I was missing our more mystical shows. And, and all of a sudden you said, Amy, what if we did a summer of woo? And I think I stopped in my tracks, had full body, like, chills. And I I'm pretty gasp. sure I shouted, yes! <laughs> So <laughs> I I agree with that recollection of events. Um, it felt like, I mean, in the first season of the show, we were very explicitly, you know, personal development plus, right? Like that, you know, we're sharing what we do. Um, and then in an effort not to 
uh, duplicate episodes or kind of, you know, feeling like some things were already just fully said, we were a little bit more indirectly woo in season two. We took it more offline behind the scenes, uh, the greater intent of the show, but maybe not super like, here's our woo. Um, and then season three, we had such a specific topic we wanted to talk about in this first chunk of the year that we really got away from it in, in some senses. In one sense, we were talking, you know, like we've talked about gods and goddesses a whole lot. And, yeah. you know, this and we of- did have like a moment. We had one episode, which was a moment of magic moment where of magic. we talked about magic. And well, and in that episode, I think you said you want to add more magic to your life, right? Um, So we've been feeling this way for a while. And that always leads me to believe, I mean, I know we're two white women in Minneapolis, but it leads me to believe there's like kind of a greater feeling out in in the world. And when I'm on social media and when I'm looking at books and talking to other friends, I think a lot of people feel disconnected from the magic. Um, Yeah, I think that feeling disconnected from magic, but a longing for it as well. I think that anytime there are, you know, anytime uh, we go through transitional phases as a group, as a culture, as a global community, that that um, the spiritual side of things can become more popular. And, and I really see many things uh, becoming mainstream uh, lately and just being like the people that I would never think to even say like I read tarot cards maybe a friend is there and they go oh yeah Amy bought tarot cards and then this person would go will you read them for me will you read my tarot cards I'm like yes I I will I never thought you would want me to so yeah, it, it feels like it's more, people are more open. It sort of reminds me of tattoos, you know? Oh, yeah. There's, I think there's a greater awareness, understanding, and acceptance of it, right? Whereas I think before people equated the tarot, and some still do, or tarot, as some people say, um, with um, Satanism, right? Or like with a Ouija right. word. And- well, and you bring up a good point, Tracy, as it does become more mainstream, there is also this, this sort of pushing factor against it, you know, where where people are like, you are doing the devil's work, it is Satanism. So you are getting that, you know, fundamental um, sort of Christianity against it, um, pushback. So that's or just kind of, fear of the unknown, right? It um, is fear of the unknown. I yeah. think on, on that spectrum too, when things go mainstream is there's also a commercialism to it. And I think that's when yeah. I disconnected, when I started seeing things in Target, when I started <laughs> seeing people who clearly aren't into the woo selling woo-less magic and mystical and yeah. products. And I don't want to gatekeep, but I also, and I, and I love that people are being introduced to it. But I also feel like that's why people want us to read tarot for them or why they still feel disconnected in this world is because they're still not connected to the woo of it, right? Like there's interest and ah. in, in awareness of it, but there's still not a total connection. And there's so many forms of woo that where do you even start? I mean, we have a whole episode on like using divination practices to like tap into yourself, journal, get to know yourself better. But I think this summer will be a little bit deeper and different types of woo yeah so what do you like what are you thinking what are you excited for the show not for yourself we'll talk about that a little bit later but for yourself what are you thinking about for summer of woo so I use woo as a way to connect deeper with myself or with a higher self, as they say, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel overly grounded and I'm an earth sign and I'm really practical and analytical and in my head anyways. Um, so I feel like I have been so in the day to day of life that even just as a human interacting with other people, I've lost my spark. Right. And so like my connection to my higher self, source, the earth, whatever you want to call it, 
um, is just gone, right? Like it's been unplugged, it's been turned off. And so I'm looking forward to turning that back on, connecting and seeing where my inner compass wants to go, right? Um, that if I were to change up my day to day, if I, you know, someone who's anti woo or not in their woo-ness, you're going to get so sick of this word. I'm trying really hard not to say it anymore. Um, so people who aren't into the mystical or, um, aren't in, in to these types of practices, um, tend to really depend on their five senses. And to me, the magic, the mystical, the mysterious is that something greater than yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's this expanding your senses and what can count as a sense and tapping into different forms of knowing that maybe scientifically can't be proven, but feel right to you. Um, and all of that's still within the realm of don't go hurt people, don't start a cult, don't start a religion, right? Like this is very... It's both individualistic, but then also as a way to connect with a, a broader group of people also looking to just connect more. I don't know. How about you? Yeah. Well, actually what I was, um, I didn't, I almost interrupted you. And then I thought, just let Tracy talk. What I was wondering about is what are you excited about for the show? Like, what would you like to talk about for the show? But um, maybe we'll come back to that and I will talk about what I'm excited about for my own summer of woo because it's not just the show I do want to dig deeper into it um, and and I think for myself you know I jokingly said I wanted to need to start wooing my woo but I I am serious about that and part of that is that intention piece, right? To start being intentional, getting back to um, actual rituals. So I, I'm i already thinking about, you know, the by the time this show airs, the new moon will have already been on Sunday. Uh, yeah, the 18th. I think. I think so. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's Sunday. But um but I'm already thinking about a new moon ritual and then of course a full moon ritual after that. So I want to be intentional with the moons. I know I've said that before, but this time for real and uh, summer solstice. So if you're listening to the show on Monday or Tuesday or even Wednesday, summer solstice is Wednesday. However, midsummer is like any time between like the 19th and the 25th. But so I want to do something specific and intentional and magical for that. So it's like I want to I want to create mindful rituals and then I want to get back in the habit of like my little casual simple rituals. Like I haven't been you know, like even my cleaning ritual that I do, my blessing of the house, I haven't been as intentional with that lately. And I want to get back to that. Um, I have a my magic spoon that I use in my coffee, and I just haven't been using it. So it's like those little tiny things that have fallen to the wayside, I want to gather them back up and put them in a little magical basket that I can then pull out when needed. I want to... Um, start I do want to start reading tarot for more people I just want to offer that and that is for them but also for me to strengthen um intuition and and different skills like that and then I've also noticed I was looking at my poor little magical space to the to the left of me and I think it could probably use a good regular cleaning and then a cleansing and then a recharging. And so again, I want to do that. And then I've got two books. I'm not going to overwhelm myself, but I have two books that I really want to dive into. And so that's my little summer of what, what are the two books? So one is I've, read before it's called intentional witchcraft intuitive witchcraft and it's just a super 
every time when I, oh, so I started reading it again and just went, oh yeah, it's just so magical. I just feel magical reading it. And then the other one is called Kick-Ass Coven. And it's just about creating sort of a, a community, a community. Yeah. Um, and so I, those are the two books. I love that. And it's, so interesting you brought up that you want to be more intentional in in these practices especially yeah. this summer and it makes sense because the solstice is coming up and there's a lot of lore around the power that the st sun and the stars in this time of year hold that goes back centuries and you know um but for me just before the show started I was reflecting and I was like I want to be more disciplined with these practices and that seems yeah. like an oxymoron I think to some people um maybe not if you're religious because there's a lot of religions that require a lot of discipline right that's, mm -hmm. like that's a part of their really thing. good point yeah but for me I think part of the disconnect from the rituals that we've talked about because we talk a lot about like oh gotta reconnect with my I want to be more intentional and when you were saying that I was like you know what anytime I've told myself, oh, you need to be more intentional. What's actually happened is my intent changed. And rather than recognizing that and figuring out what my new intent is, I just called myself lazy and undisciplined and just stopped doing things and ignored it. And so for me, that discipline is because I'm, I don't know what my intent is. And I've let that get in the way of my practices or become my practices. And like, that's a lot for you and your higher self and your guides to be like, what's my purpose? What's my intent? What should I be focusing on? Right. That's, right. That's not, a, that's not a connecting to anything. Right. I mean, you can definitely use these tools to help you with that. But me, it was becoming the sole purpose of doing them. And then that just, it didn't, like you said, didn't make me feel good anymore. So I feel like I want to get more disciplined with the ritual. I too have two books. I want to get more disciplined in my practices. Do you, can you t share what your two books are? Yeah. So Dennis William Hawk has one called Alchemy. It's part of his oh, yeah. vegan I life got series. That one too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we both yeah. have this one. I got it from the library and then I just, I like let it auto renew so much. They tried to charge me for it. And I realized why I wasn't reading it at the speed I, I wanted to and why I was holding on to it was I just wanted to highlight and write in it. I didn't feel like I had the time to both read it and take notes. And I was trying to flag stuff and I was getting overwhelmed with all the work future Tracy was going to have to do to, to really do this. So finally I just returned it and I bought it because it was like, oh, now we can take notes in the book and we can go back to it forever. Uh, we don't have to create a whole new process for how to- Not to, not to go off on a tangent yeah. and not, we'll get to your other book, but the Intuitive Witchcraft is a book that I own. And there is, it, there's such joy in highlighting things, underlining things, making notes. There, it, It's just, it, you feel so involved in the book. Well, that and I could tell this is information, like this is a start of a learning journey. Um, he, yeah, I kept hearing like different people reference different spirituality books and alchemy books. So I'm, I am getting more into the alchemy side of it and kind of like how this all started. Um, and it wasn't until I decided to buy this that I went back through that list and he's the author of like three of the 10 that were recommended and here I've had it all along. <laughs> and so I could tell I was, I was preventing myself from reading it because I didn't have the capacity to come up with a process for how to record and re-access this information, right? Like I was just so involved and I was like, it's an $18, you have $18 to spend on a book. You can, like you said, you can have the joy of just uh, engaging and living in the book and knowing that you yeah. get to keep this. So, uh, not, I mean, hopefully I didn't uh, oversell it and that future me is really happy with that purchase. <laughs> the one that made me think about discipline is this one that was recommended to me. I was a workshop on project management where we all shared what we were reading. And this woman was so enthusiastic about this book. I immediately ordered it. It's called sacred woman. Um, it's a guide to healing the feminine uh, body, mind, and spirit by Queen Afua, A-F-U-A. Um, but a huge part of this is like committing to the practice, not just reading the book, but like this is, this isn't even a, a couple week long journey. This is a months and months long journey. And this is, you know, like really committing to, to this whole body, mind, spirit aspect. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because um, 
both books that that I want to read, like I said, I had started Intuitive Witchcraft before and never finished it, but probably got halfway through. So that's why I'm starting at the beginning. And same with Kick-Ass Coven. Both of them have um, exercises in them, right? And it's so easy to read a book and just like do the exercise in your head or yes. just say, yeah, I would know what to do with that and not actually do the work. It's so easy to do that. But so what I think I'm hearing from you is that part of your discipline is to actually do the work that they're talking about in the book. And I mean, honestly, to not just skim it and be like, oh, I've done that or, oh, I'll add that to that or, oh, I'll do that at the new moon. But like, I I'm going to do a daily practice every day. And that's a huge commitment, right? To mm -hmm. especially um, my challenge isn't necessarily that. I lose interest is that the second my schedule changes for something, it gets too hard, right? So like if I get used to doing something every day before work and then suddenly I have a 7 a.m. doctor's appointment, then it's just like out the window for God or like, yeah. oh, do I get up? Well, I guess that thing's am, right? done. Like, yeah. I really, I, <laughs> I don't know if it's like the ADD in me just knowing, you know, failure with that again with the process thing, overthinking all of this. Um, but I like for this type of stuff, doing the same thing at the same time every day. And it's not always possible. Right. But then that's also part of the discipline of it. Um, well, and that also, is you're, you are habitizing it then too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to habit stack with it. Right. So like, what else can I be doing at the same time to support mm -hmm. this and engage in it? Um, but then it's also, I think you said something related to this earlier. Oh, it was off there. Um, I, I have to release control in this, right? Like, so yes, I want to be more disciplined, but I also have to release control. And <laughs> that's an awkward balance. Again, if you don't have a process or you've never done it or you're self-guided, right? Um, so many religious practices, I think why so many people get into them and do them is there's, like you said, there's the community there and the practice is already built in. And the accountability is already built in and someone's already figured out the how for you. And when you're trying to do it self-guided or for really personal reasons, that's a lot to both lead yourself through this mystical transformation, but also be managing the process of mystical transformation and choosing your sources and like trying to find the time to do it right. Um, so I think there is something to be said, you know, like how many people Sunday mornings were church and like you can never deviate from that. You always, you know, Wednesday nights were um, youth group. Right. And like, right. And yet I remember the feeling of, you know, repeating the words that were supposed to be repeated. And it was basically said like this, blah, 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 because it just didn't, it no longer meant anything. And so I think even though you do have that extra added I hate to say work, but you know, you're doing, you're, you have to be disciplined and you're coming up with what you're doing. It is so much more individualized and it's probably what you need, one would hope. And I think it would mean more. I just think it means more if you yeah. develop it yourself. And it's about knowing what you need too, because you can also just randomly, I mean, a lot of these practices and stuff we're going to talk about in the next, um, you know, five episodes or so. Um, there are groups and communities and all of this oh, yeah. done for you, but I know for me to be successful, what kind of like pre-work and parameters I have to do, whereas I know you can just jump into stuff and like, this is now what I do. And I was like, oh, my brain doesn't like there's for my ADD, like there's some things I just forget that I set out as a goal and it doesn't matter how many notes I do. Like if it's not built into my process or my day, mm -hmm. my schedule routine, it can just get missed. <laughs> and so I'm trying to be like, I want to be more disciplined, but also I recognize my weaknesses, limitations and strengths. Right. And I got to work around all this, but I'm looking forward to, uh, in terms of the show, the question you asked earlier, you know, so much of what we talk about is just sharing what we're doing. And so I'm looking forward to getting to continue having those discussions with you. Um, because while there is a lot of stuff we both do, we do them differently. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. And there's some things I do that you don't and vice versa. And um, it'll be really interesting too, what kind of engagement we get on social media, what people want to hear more of or what they're doing um, to kind of, and, and what we both learn in these books to just kind of broaden my avenues for connection. I, I love that. I think that there, you know, there's also this part of me that's like, well, if it's summer of woo, maybe we should also be, you know, talking about vampires and werewolves. And then I have to go, okay, Amy, that'll do. That'll do. I mean, I think I put somewhere in the notes, I might talk about aliens. You don't know what's going to happen this summer. Like, <laughs> Well, aliens, yeah, absolutely. And frankly, I can see fa fairies in the future. Um, you know, I've told that story before. I won't tell again right now. Keep you on your edge of the seat for the some other episode about looking for fairies. But I think that I love the idea too, or what you said about finding out what other people are doing or what they want us to talk about. Or if they're just like, no, just keep talking, get into those books. Tell us about those well, books. And I think, I mean, I love that you brought up some of the, um, uh, oh, what were we calling them earlier? The supernatural, right? Yeah. Yeah. Part of why this is summer of woo. I mean, we talk about woo year long in, in a sense, but with the summer solstice and the sun, there's certain types of magic or ritual routine or whatever that just make more sense during a summer period which again we're in the northern hemisphere which I think most of our listeners are um and then you know maybe some of those other supernatural things you brought up or other stuff is what we'll talk about um in the fall right there's so it's just there's cycles right and so right now midsummer we yeah. uh, it has a few different names. We have uh, so many episodes on the different Sabbaths and stuff like that. If you want to go back for more, um, but there's some things where it's just if you live a cyclical life, if you live in terms of the wheel of the year or the seasons and all that, like you, said, it just feels better, right? Like it just feels more natural to do them um, versus when it's darker. Like I said, there's certain things I get more into in the winter versus right now. Um, so it'd be cool to kind of explore that. I don't know. There's so many different things we can, we can woo ourselves with this summer. Yeah. So you and I were talking about something, um, earlier, well, before that we hit record about, um, some things that are happening with, um, with this kind of like intuitive practices or spirituality or things like that sort of I don't know if you would call it like the TikToking of it or or yeah, I think it still falls under the commercialization because many people yeah. are monetizing their efforts they're um you know there are plenty of people that like us just talk about it because they like it and they're sharing mm -hmm. um but there's definitely this idea that you can cherry pick things from ancient cultures and call it the same thing. Um, this idea that um, this is all new. This is all age of Aquarius. It's just hippy dippy stuff from the 60s and 70s, man. And it's like, no, this goes back to this, you know, dawn of man. And um, we've always done certain practices and things. And it. Yeah, I so feel like the the term new age is so wrong. Because almost everything that's termed new age is quite old. But but sorry, go ahead. Keep well, going on that. What what I rules. see on social media that I like is several factors. One, a return to the earth, right? And showing gratitude and trying to connect to even within our five senses, the world around us. And some people mm -hmm. see that as hippy dippy silly. Um, when it's been around for centuries, right? Dancing around a fire at certain times of the year um, is seen as silly woo-woo, but like people have done it in terms of community in a way to express gratitude or celebrate for ages. Yeah. And so, you know, there's that connection to the, you know, reconnecting to earth. Um, and then some other pieces of it are reconnecting to your ancestors and to where you came from. And I think that's why we're also seeing like a gentrification of these practices in social media is 
and, and largely Americans and, and not just Americans and not all, but we're very disconnected from our ancestry. Nobody else in the world been asked like, oh, hey, where are you from? Well, I'm American, but I'm 50% Irish and I'm 10% this and 15% this. And you're trying to get all these bonus points for these cultures you are not a part of, right? Um, but also American culture isn't always something to be excited about from a cultural standpoint, right? Like right. what's our food, what's our holiday celebrations, right? It's all bastardized versions of other things. And so I see a lot of people getting more into Celtic traditions, more people um, really just trying to dive deeper into the roots and, and where they came from, um, which is also what I'm trying to do. But then it's also really hard to be like, oh, of this, what's a closed practice? What's been stolen? What's been renamed, repurposed? And so there is kind of a space to reflect in this area about what you're doing and why and where yeah. it's from. And maybe not to be like, you're doing it wrong. Like don't tell yes. people that. If And if you think you might be doing something that is a closed practice, but it's something you're really attracted to or you really like, then fine, do it in privacy of your own home and don't talk about it and don't tell well, people and don't rename it something that you want to rename it or and in terms of these rules like there's absolutely rituals and ways to do things but when we're talking about magic and mysticism it's how are you connecting to that and what are you feeling and what's your purpose behind it yeah and I get really frustrated, you know, when you're having a really personal experience of connecting to your higher self and someone else is like, nope, this is how you should do it. Or this is how you'd be more successful. And I'm just like, you got a whole lot of rules for an intuitive practice here. <laughs> like, this is my intuition. I don't need your little uh, box around it. Yeah. I, um, it feels, yeah. I've seen a lot of people on social media call it, you know, like, don't colonize your magic. Like, don't. Um, don't don't worry too much about how you're doing it you don't need these books right like Amy and I are seeking out um how to expand and and how to learn new things but I'm not like taking everything I read and being like okay this is my practice now right it's right spirituality is kind of the opposite of religion in that way that you can be like this doesn't fit what I'm trying to mm -hmm. what just doesn't fit what's for me um yeah yeah I mean, one thing uh, we, I think what we both got excited about with like bringing this back on the show more directly is don't discount your woo, <laughs> like celebrate it, talk openly about it. If you feel comfortable sharing it. Um, and You know, I think don't discount your woo, but maybe if you feel like you're more woo adjacent or you're just not sure about it, it's fine to dip a toe in. And in fact, I, have I didn't create this I read it on the farmer's almanac I mean if the farmer's almanac can talk about like what to do at midsummer or the summer solstice I think it's okay like it's all right so um they it, from the farmer's almanac if you hold a pebble in your hand while circling a midsummer bonfire any wish will be granted Simply whisper the wish before casting the stone into the fire. How easy is that? I mean, how many people throw a penny into a fountain and make a wish? It's the same thing, but cooler. And, and if you don't have a if you don't have a fire, like I think a candle would do, and then just take your pebble and like whisper into it and just like, I don't know wave it over the flame or something and blow it out and then put the pebble by the handle. That seems like it would work. It's just, it's so interesting to me, every single culture at every single stage of, you know, the Anthropocene, whatever you want to call it from, you know, when humans started to, to date mm -hmm. has these practices. And I feel like it's a very post-industrialization and like that colonization, civilized versus un uncivilized, where we've made people feel immature and childish when it feels like such a natural inclination to hold a rock, whisper a secret and put in a fire, right? Like that what actually- What a great point. <laughs> yes. Really, right? And like, yes. I, once, I, I, had a, I had a dinner party once and I gave everybody a crystal. I picked people up crystals that I thought that they needed. And I included the little paper on what it was and what it's for, but you don't have to know that, right? 
And I could tell some of the men at the party were like, ooh, woo woo, right? Like, but they took their rocks. And so then later when I asked one of their wives, like, what'd they do with their rocks, right? Like, what'd they do with it? And she's like, we don't talk about it, but um, he does hold it a lot. <laughs> or like, he takes it to work. And it's just like, yeah. Because whether or not you know what a crystal does or you're holding the right one for what you need, holding a rock is a normal thing for, he, right? Like, that's such a thing we've gotten away from living in homes and stuff like that. It does just feel good to hold earth in your, right? Like a part of the earth in your hand and spin yeah. it around. Whether yeah. or not you're actively being like, take my anxiety, sweet little rock. But like, it, it helps. And so these little, like, that's, I love that you said woo adjacent because it's just like, it might feel silly at first, but why do you feel silly? Is it because it doesn't feel right or because you feel embarrassed? And just like chuck the embarrassment and try it, right? Like, you know, I think part of that is both things. First of all, you're not used to it. And second of all, maybe you're not sure how to do it. And maybe you are a little embarrassed. I think it's all those things. It was like when I got to Paris, I was embarrassed to speak French, to try to speak French, even though I just, studied and done it for so long. And then the minute I just like started doing it, then it became easier and easier and easier. So I think that you just dip your toe in, you start something, maybe you do it privately when no one's around and maybe you giggle, whatever, but you just try it. And, and honestly, I, I feel like the more connected we get, the better we'll feel. I really do. I, um, my you sister, gave, oh, I just God. want to show this. My sister, if you're on YouTube, you can see this bracelet, this delicate little gold bracelet that she gave me. And on it, it says, you are magic. And so when I wear it, if I'm having, if I'm in a really stupid meeting, all I have to do is just look down and say, yep, yes, I am. And so this doesn't have to matter. Well, and you also, don't you have a sign by your bed? What do you touch every morning to remind oh, you? Oh, yeah. Something magical is about to happen. Yeah. So I touch that before my feet hit the ground. But I yeah. I don't know if anybody, I mean, if you listen to us, you might also be aware of this. But um, Andrew Huberman has a podcast and he's a neuroscientist. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that these neuroscientists are, you know, the brain studying the brain always gets me. I think I mentioned that before that they tell you to do that's actually in line with like the basis of a lot of this and like getting in touch with your body, slowing down, using heat, using cold, right? Doing that. If we didn't have the housing we have today, we would be doing that for our bodies, for our minds, right? And we would just feel better. So I, I view this as just like the summer of woo is like an opportunity to feel brighter, through a different medium or channel that doesn't really involve a huge investment, right? Like you said, it's intention, it's intentionality. Yeah, uh, I love that. Okay, so thank you so much for listening to The Woo. Um, please engage with us on social media. We're gonna have some polls up. If you listen on Spotify, I'll see if I can throw some polls in there and you can kind of let us know what kind of woo you're interested in hearing about. There's also going to be potential for us doing tarot or other readings for people and sharing them in future episodes, if that's of interest to you. But if this episode wasn't too woo-woo for you, or maybe it was just woo enough, uh, please spread it with a friend. We'd appreciate you wooing us with some love on your preferred platform at the rate, review, and subscribe. And then, as I said, you can reach out to us via Instagram and YouTube under The Brightly Podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com. And with that, we hope you have a bright and magical day. Woo! <laughs>